Welcome back to the channel for another video. I am Brandon, the channel is Tech Chomper, and today we are here to get initial reactions to the FX3. Uh, I don't know if this video is gonna be part of a bigger video or just a video on its own, but I wanted to get something, after watching all the videos I've watched, having an idea in my mind what I'm about to get, I just wanted to get my initial reactions to getting my hands on it, actually holding the piece of gear. And uh, over the coming weeks, I'm gonna be using it for a bunch of shoots. I hope that you will join me. There's gonna be a series of videos coming out covering settings, use cases, uh, rigs, all kinds of stuff. I just really wanna dive deep on this camera, and I hope that you will join me for that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks, let's go. All right, it's time, and this baby right here, the Sony FX3, that's right. That's why we're here, I'm pretty jazzed about it. So let's open up the box and uh, get my initial impressions, reactions to this piece of kit. I'm not gonna show you the box. You can watch somebody else's unboxing video. Um, USB cable, I'm not gonna show you a USB cable. You should know what that looks like. Box is nondescript brown. I don't really care, I'm not a huge packaging person. All right, here's part of the, part of the thing people like to get grumpy about, this microphone piece right here. So let's get this out. It is plasticky. I would agree it's plasticky. But nice, feels nice, has a nice feel to the grip. That actually fits my hand reasonably well. You can see that there. I probably have to cover my eyes to make it work, but you can see the grip there. It is plastic, it is plastic. I've seen somebody's breakdown of this. I know that there is metal inside of here and up through here, there are metal pieces. Uh, the weakness from what I've seen is in this part. There was one gentleman who uh, traveled with his handle on the camera, which I don't think is recommended. And uh, this microphone piece right here snapped off basically in his luggage. This is not ideal. Um, so I probably wouldn't travel with the handle on, but I have to say first impression, feels nice. It feels it has a nice grip. I don't have the biggest hands in the world, reasonably sized hands, but um, I probably shouldn't show you my fingers tips because FBI don't have the largest hands in the world, um, but this feels pretty good. It has a nice, nice grip. I see what they mean. This kind of hits the thumb right up in this area here, hits the thumb a little bit. Um, I'm gonna take this piece of plastic off of there so you can see the mic inputs. Is it gonna focus on it? There it is. Little, little door here. Let me flip that over for you. Got our window here. With all our inputs and stuff. Very nice. Very nice little piece of kit. Feels pretty good. I'm, I don't know what people are complaining about so far. I understand it's plastic, but we have plastic everywhere now, people. You just gotta deal with it. That, that feels pretty nice. I don't feel, oh, we got a switch on the back here as well. It's like we got some switch action on the back with a little door that flips up here. Oh, it's getting my fingers there. Little door that flips up there. Still doesn't like it. Pretty nice, pretty nice. All right, let's get the camera out. That's really what we're most excited about. I've been shooting this uh, on the A7C here for the last few weeks. Oh, this is a little fatter, a little thicker, a little heavier. Not even out of the bag yet, but I can feel definitely, oh wow, that's a chunk. Noticeably thicker than the A7C. Not drastically heavier, heavier but, but thicker. Oh, that is a fat little beast, look at that. Look at that thing. That's a, that's a thick, thick little chunk of camera there. Oh, that is a thick little chunk of camera. That's nice. It's got, ooh, that grip is nice. Oh, that grip is much deeper there. I don't know if you can see that there. Let's see if it'll focus here. This, I don't know if you can see the grip there. That grip is noticeably deeper into the camera body, which is really nice. A lot, a lot more grip. A lot more, ooh, a lot thicker grip. We got our screen open for some reason. Oh, there we go. And the flip out screen, the Holy Grail screen. That is, that's a nice thick little camera. That's very nice. Ooh, I like this finish a lot. This gray is really nice. All right, let's see. Here, here we go. Let's flip out this door and see how we're dealing with the screen. Oh, that door's... That door opens there. Where does this door open? I don't know where the door's open. There we go. Got to grab the black edge. A little hard to figure out there. Got it. Let's see if our screen flips into the door. Oh, there we go. Hits the door. Hits the door right there. There's a door. There's a door hitting issue. I had seen. 
you can see it flip into it there. So that's as far as you can flip the screen with that door open right there for microphone, headphone. As you can see, it's going to whack that right there. I don't know that that'll be a problem for me. Uh, I, I told myself when I got this, if I could flip this down at least 45 degrees, which it looks like I can flip it about that far, that's acceptable to me. Uh, there is a video to remove those doors. I'm not thrilled about the idea of opening my new camera at all. I will. You can take this end off and pop these doors, but now you have exposed ports uh, with no protection that I'm not thrilled about. I use my camera on a gimbal a lot. I love using a gimbal. I love moving camera. So for me, this door is going to stay open a lot. The a7 III made this little mic door a separate door, a a a7S3, A7S3, I'm sorry, and the A7 IV both made the mic door a separate little door so the screen can flip past it all the way around into selfie mode. Uh, in this one, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to flip it in, flip it over, and then flip it out to get to selfie mode to avoid that mic door. And then that door, I'm guessing, is going to block a little bit of the screen there, as you can see. Uh, maybe you can't see. There you go. That door is going to block a little bit of the screen when it's open there. So you're going to lose a little bit of that top corner. Not the end of the world. I'm willing to deal with it to get 422 10-bit. I really like me some 422 10-bit. <clears throat> Came from the Lumix world and got really spoiled with 422 10-bit. That is a chunky little camera. That's a fat little monkey. It's not bad though. It's not bad. Feels nice. Full-size HDMI port there. Is that going to be blocking some screen? It's going to be blocking some screen. You can see right there just that you have to flip that in, flip it around, and then out. And you're going to lose just a little bit there of that screen because of the door. I think I can deal. I think I can deal with it. Can't flip that back up. Got to close that. Pull around. Pull around, flip. Pull around, flip. Pull around, flip. Pull around, flip. It's okay. I'll deal with it. I'm not thrilled about it. The door is, the door is annoying. I don't think I want to take the door off, though, yet. We'll see in a future video how I feel about it. Um, so let me pop a battery in. I did charge another battery. I have an FC 100, which is the battery this takes from my A7C. Uh, I'm going to pop this. Ooh, maybe I'm not going to pop this in. There we go. We're in. We're going to power on. Let's check. I haven't seen the new menu. I mean, I've seen the new menu system, I guess. Up oh, power button is over here. I forgot. We've moved it to the, to the other side over here now, not on top. <gasps> oh, powering up. Oh, I forgot we have touchscreen now. Touchscreen is nice, I have to admit. Uh, coming from the Lumix world, I'm very used to navigating with touchscreens. So the A7C was a big adjustment to have to go back to just using the wheel and clicking and scrolling. It is not as fast, and the menu system is not as good on the A7C. The new menu system looks really nice and updated on the FX3 and A7S3, uh, A7 IV. I'm very much looking forward to using the new menu system. So uh, I don't really know what else I'm going to cover in this video right now. Like I said, I'm not a big unboxer. I just really wanted to give you initial reactions, but initial reaction, this is a, a nice feeling camera, really good size grip here. Uh, I don't feel like I'm going to drop it or anything. Just kind of chunky, but nice. Um, the squared off edge doesn't feel as nice to hold on to like this, but I'm probably going to be holding a lens like this a lot, so I don't think I'm really going to care about that. Uh, I can reach the record button with the thumb up here on top easy, and this little wheel. I mean, the, the joystick that's been moved to the top. I think I can work with this. I like this. This is different. This feels different than any of the other cameras I've held. Very, very nice little brick of camera here. Oh, I hear the fan. I didn't hear it till I got right next to it. There's a fan in there. If I hold it here, I can't hear that fan over basic room noise. Maybe for a really quiet room, there is a fan. Oh, I have to get, I have to get very close to hear that fan. Like in my ear hole. Can hear it there. It's, it's not very loud. You're, you can hear it if you listen for it. Your 19 year old sound guy is going to be like, Hey, I can hear it. <laughs> I think you can turn it off. It's fine. You can turn it off. This is pretty awesome. I don't know why the fans even running. We're not even doing anything. Anyway, thank you for joining me. 
this is part of a bigger video, watch the rest of it now. Here it comes. If it was a standalone video, which I haven't decided yet, thank you for joining me. And as I said, come back for the series. Uh, I'm going to be deep diving on this camera as I get to know it because this is my new workhorse that's moving in to replace the GH5S, I think, unless it gets returned. But so far, I am super pumped about moving to full frame uh, and the great autofocus and just the creative tools that it unlocks. Not that everything needs to be incredibly shallow depth of field, but not having the ability to choose very shallow depth of field if I want to or very deep depth of field is frustrating. And and given the high ISO performance of this camera, as well as the full frame, you really can open up your iris and get an amazing shallow depth of field shot or shut it down and crank up your ISO to one of the higher native ISOs. Uh, I mean, there's really just one higher native ISO, but crank it up to the higher ISOs and get a great looking shot, but uh, not have to have a, a wide open apertures if you need a deep depth of field. So I just like having those creative choices not dictated to me by the tool, but available so that I can choose as a creator uh, how I want to make the shot look. All right, awesome, thanks for joining me. I will see you again next time. I'm out. <laughs>